G'day, welcome back to the channel. And we've got another Runcam product on the bench for you today. What is it? What could it be? Well, if you guessed a camera, you're probably pretty close because that's mainly what Runcam makes. If we have a look at the end of the box, it says that this is the Runcam 2 4K. The 4K version of Runcam 2, it says it's 49 grams. We will check that. Um, yeah, let's look in the box. We don't unbox things, but we do look at what's inside. And there it is, orange. And I love orange cameras because they just show up when you lose them, when they bounce off your model or whatever. When something goes wrong, an orange camera is so much easier to find than a black one or a silver one. They just stand out. You can tell it's a 4K because it says so on the camera. And if you've already had a run cam too, you'll know how, you know, how to use them, what they do. But uh, let's take a closer look at this one. And for those of you who've never seen a run cam too before, this is the HD version. This is the, I've used this a lot. I use this camera a lot because it has some benefits over your more traditional GoPro and your, and your cube size cameras like this. In so much as if you've got it on a plane, there's a very small frontal area. And the, the run cam 4 is the same. They're using the same moldings. Everything looks the same from the outside. It's the same height. It's got the same holes. Ooh. Actually, this has got two holes there and this doesn't have two holes. I don't know why. Oh, maybe I've got it upside down. That's probably what it is. Yes, there you go. So it's exactly the same mouldings, as you can see. Seems to be pretty much the same lens set up. The same little door on the back where you can get your SD card and your battery. And the battery is removable. That's one of the other benefits of these things. I've, uh, how many people have got uh, HD cams where they have basically um, become useless because the battery's gone flat? Here's a Mobius. I'm lucky. My battery on my Mobius has lasted an awfully long time, but I know a lot of people... Uh, even in the club here, I've had Mobiuses and the battery goes flat and they can't be asked pulling them apart and replacing the battery. But uh, with these, it's simple. The battery's in here. Little pull tab there, pull the battery out, put a new one in. Woohoo! And you can buy spare batteries. So um, even if you if you want to do a lot of filming, you can take spare batteries to the field and change them as necessary to um, keep recording. It's great stuff. Good thinking, Runcam. Yes, I like the Runcam 2 format a lot. Um, Unlike the Runcam 5 and Runcam 4 and other ones I've been knocking out recently, the Runcam 2 has Wi-Fi. I'll just put this back on here so I don't lose things because I'm terrible at this. I lose stuff. And it takes an SD card, of course. Um, you want to use a high bitrate SD card, a, a class 10 at least, preferably a V30 because the bitrate is higher on these than on an HD camera. Uh, but you see, it's the same orange as the Runcam 5S or whatever. What is this? The Runcam 5? Yeah, the Runcam 5. Um, I like the Runcam 5 too. And there's a lot of similarities between those two cameras. You could be tempted into thinking it's just the same guts in a different box, but it's not. And I'll show you why it's not shortly. But again, if you've got this on the front of a model, look at the difference in frontal area. If you've got a fast model, this is going to slow you down much less than that. And so let's do some comparisons first. Let's see how it performs in the weight status. Remember it said 49 grams. Let's put that to the test. Here we have the scales that do not show the blood. Let's have a look. Ta-da. Oh, look at that. Oh, they lied. It's 50. Game over. It's 50. They understated the weight. Of course, the scales could be slightly wrong. There you go. 50 grams. Now, I wonder how the Runcam 2's got Velcro on this one. So it should be a little heavier. Yes, one, oh yeah, it's about the same. So there's no extra weight associated with going to 4K. How does it compare with the Runcam 5S? It's lighter than, the, or the Runcam 5, lighter than the Cube camera. And what about the Mobius? The Mobius is really light. Yeah, it's, it's 10 grams heavier than the Mobius, although this one's got a lot of Velcro and some orange or some yellow vinyl, because as I said, you can't find a black camera when it falls off from the grass. So yeah, weight wise, it's not too much of a penalty. And if you're flying one of these cine quads where you haven't got a lot of carrying capability, then using a camera like this can make a big difference in performance if you compare it to using a heavier camera like a GoPro. So, and 4K, remember, it is true 4K. It's not just the pretend 4K like the Tarsia 2 and so forth, which I think are about 2K7 upscaled. I think they just interpolated up to 4K because they never look as crisp and sharp as a true 4K camera. Right, so let's, well, Let's have a look at what you get in the box, just because I know you want to see. And what a beautiful box it is. Lovely white box. And you've got the little place where the camera goes with some foam that you can always use to put over your microphone on your on your vid video recorder. Um, here we go. Um, it's a black box, and I think we're probably going to have some cables. As you can see, it have not even been opened. We have some cables in here, I would think, and probably a mount, because you can put these on a tripod. Yes, I was right. Full points to me. What have we got? We've got a, a USB connector for charging and connecting to your computer if you want to. We've got cable here so you can use this as an FPV camera. This will give you your video out and allow power in. And I think I read on the box, it's got quite a voltage range this one. It will do up to 4S. So you can run it up to 4S directly without the need for a bit, which is kind of good. Then we've got the little tripod. Is it a tripod one? Has it got a tripod thingy in there? Yes. See the little tripod screw there? So you can put this on one of those little tiny tripods and use it as a field camera for getting shots of things other than 
flying on the model. Huh, so that's all good. I like it. No worries. I'm happy with that. Let's put the bits back in the box because otherwise I will definitely lose them. I always lose the bits. There you go. So let's have a look at how you set this thing up, which is also very important. As I said, it uses Wi-Fi. It doesn't use the little QR code thing that the these cameras do. It uses Wi-Fi. So let's fire up the Roncam app and see what we get. And of course, I think there's iOS and Android apps. This is my super good smartphone. This is the new Galaxy 52. You can see it's huge. Look at it compared to my hand. Uh, it's a good test of an app whether it'll run on an old, slow, crappy phone like this. Because I don't use it. People know I don't use a smartphone for my daily calls. I use a phone that you can talk into. It's amazing what they can do with phones these days. Imagine that a phone you can talk into and talks back to you. Um, it's like having a tin can with string. But oh, this is a bit slow. Jump cut. So here we have the Runcam app. And let me just turn on the phone. I've got it set to auto record, so I'll turn it on. And you notice it'll immediately start recording. Oh, no, I don't have an SD card in it. Never mind. So I'll just, don't worry about that. That's fine. I forgot to put the SD card in. Don't worry about the blinking light. You can set it to auto record, which is really, really handy. But let's connect. Now, first of all, have to turn on the Wi-Fi with this other little button here. And that little light should come on. Bing, there we go. Now let's, it'll flash until it gets a Wi-Fi connection. Let's connect to your camera. And through the magic of wireless and Wi-Fi in a moment, in a moment, it's a long way, it takes a long time for the radio waves to get across there. It's a very long distance. Sometimes it takes two times, but no, I think we've got it. There we go, bing, bing, there you go. So there is the, the connection, this light's gone solid, so we are now Wi-Fi connected. And you can see if I move, there's a lot of lag there. You wouldn't use this for FPV through the Wi-Fi, would you? No. Um, but there you go, we've got, oh, attention, attention. Oh yeah, no micro SD, that's fine, I knew that. So don't bother me anymore. But there we go. There is the, there is the older, uh, can we do the, the um, infinite tunnel thing? Where is it? Ooh, no, I can't do it. Oh, too lazy. Right. So there we go. Let's take a look at what you've got. Mostly, most people want to know, what about resolutions? What can we do in my resolution? So I'll just, with my crappy phone, I shall call up the resolutions. And here we go. Um, there is 4K, which is 3840 by 2160 and if you go to that you can only get 30 frames per second it's not a 40 frame per second camera um, which is a 50 sorry 60 frames per second camera that's what makes a difference this is one of the things you'll notice if you want GoPro like performance you've got to buy a GoPro because these things will only do 30 frames per second in 4k it's not uncommon the Tarsia uh, Cadex Tarsia 2 will only do 30 frames a second a lot of the cheaper cameras the cheaper options to go pro are limited in terms of the number of frames per second they can do but hey 30 frames a second is enough i would use an nd filter if i was going to be using it 30 frames a second though because otherwise 30 frames per second can look quite staccato quite jerky um, if you've got lots of light and therefore the shutter speed is very low you can set the shutter speed on here but it's not a good idea to set it too low because then everything becomes washed out. There's not enough exposure control to compensate for the slower shutter speed without an ND filter. Right, so anyway, we've got 2K7, which is 2740 by 1524. That's the next one. And you can have that at 60 frames per second or 50 frames per second. There you go. That's the only choices you get there. So if you, if you live in a PAL country where you, your television standards are 50 frames per second and 25, this is really good because it's so nice to have your camera putting out a frame rate that's compatible with any other like um, you know camcorder or um, mirrorless camera footage that you might be doing as well trying to integrate it otherwise again you get all sorts of jerkiness um, and then it does HD Whoop, no what are we doing oh no stay connected go back here we go um, oh I hit the right this phone is too small it's too small I tell you hopefully it'll reconnect otherwise I'm going to be editing this bit out here we go Back to the, oop, beep, beep. there we go, thank you. And it'll tell me I've got no SD card, but I know that. So let's go, let's go back to the resolution setting. Come on, come on. Anyone who's got a really nice phone they want to send me, do it. Why, are you, why aren't you working? What's going on here? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh man, nothing's working. Probably because I interrupted the, the initial connection. Jump cut. Welcome back, I had to disconnect and reconnect these apps and especially on a crappy phone they're never very reliable anyway let's go uh, we've got 1080 can i pull it up yes 1080 so that's hd you've got up to 120 frames per second in that and you can also i should point out select the bit rates which is good because far too many times we get high resolutions high frame rates with insufficient bit rate and you get horrible blocky pixelation of the footage in this case it you can choose a bit rate that's far more amenable to fast operations like mini quads or, or flying close to the ground. Now here we go, we've got HD, so you've really only got three resolutions. There's no 1440p, there's no 4.3 aspect ratio, so if you're going to put this on a quad, you're not going to be able to make it into super view and make it look really, really fast. So this is really more of a fixed wing type of a camera. 
Uh, I, you can use it on your cine quads, of course, because you don't want super view on a cine quad. You want nice linear uh, cinematic footage. So on a cine quad, oh, what's going on here? I don't want any updates. Go away. I hate these apps. Go away. No. Get out of here. It's terrible. Um, and now it's lost the link. Oh, I don't know. Um, I like the QR code system better, actually, to be totally honest, because I don't have all this crap going on here. Um, anyway, so yeah, uh, it, it's, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't particularly well suit quad racing, but it does suit cine quads, it does suit fixed wing because of those uh, various things I mentioned about the, the low frontal area. And so I guess all that remains is to have a look at what the picture looks like. That's the bottom line, isn't it? That's the, the thing you want to see is the, uh, can I get out of here? No, I just have to go back, disconnect. And this little light should start flashing. Yes, it does. And we can turn the whole damn thing off. There we go, bingo. There we go, it's all finished, right. Yeah, so let's put this back on here. Um, so yes, uh, let's have a look at what the footage looks like. And I've taken some footage in sunlight, bright sunlight, and also I took some footage in some really, a really dull overcast day. And to be honest, this, oh, now my phone's making noises. This thing is great. I, I like it. it the, hot, the wide dynamic range is not as good as, a GoPro. I've got to admit it. I mean, but this is a much cheaper camera. This is not a GoPro. People probably want to compare it to a GoPro. It's not a GoPro. It's a much cheaper camera, but it is full 4K and it's going to be really good value for fixed wing flying on sunny days because in the really dull days, in the worst conditions, as you can see here in this video, it really shows the lack of dynamic range in some areas. You get that bright sheet of cloud backlit by the sun, but it's really dull and the ground goes a bit black on you. Hey, that's it. I noticed a degree of that with the other run cams as well. I think it's just a limitation of the chipset they're using and the sensors can't be held, but it's a budgetary consideration. If you're going to pay less dollars, you don't expect the same performance. Um, in sunny conditions, it looks brilliant. Now, this footage here I shot at the park with lots of sun, but unfortunately I had the camera mounted on too much of an angle. It was on the Cine Queen 4K, which is a tiny Cine Quad Sub 250, so it shows that it doesn't affect the performance of a quad too much at all. It, 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 it's so light that you can actually stick it on a Sub 250 and you, still, you don't cripple the quad. It still flies okay. Unfortunately, it was pointing at the sky, so it's not the best footage I've ever taken. Um, but take it for what it is. Now, I will put some separate footage up in 4K because you want to see what it looks like in 4K. This is 1080p. This is just my normal video. I'm going to put up a 4K um, reel, which will be in 60 frames a second, and I'll include 4K footage and 2K7 footage in that. So you can see, even though YouTube will mangle it a bit, hopefully it will be unmangled enough for you to get a pretty good idea. And I think this is a pretty sharp camera. This camera is much sharper, for instance, than the as I said, the Tarsia, the Cadex Tarsia, and it's actually sharper than the uh, Panasonic 4K camcorder, the $3,000 New Zealand dollar Panasonic 4K camcorder I've got coming in a week or two. So it's pretty damn good for sharpness. And that's great because it means you can reframe and edit and do all sorts of cool things. But there you go, my opinion on this. Well, um, I will be still using my Runcam 2 HD, but this is a fantastic enhancement of the product. It's really good. I will be using this as much, mainly on my fixed wings, mainly on my fixed wings. And of course, I'll be using this on quads and things. So the Runcam, another pretty good product, actually. I'm quite happy with that. Nice product. And if you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place. I'll put a link to the Runcam website where you can get more information. It is not an affiliate link. I don't make any money. I don't care if you buy these or not. It doesn't worry me. Um, if you buy them, you're the only one who benefits, not me. So there you go. In the meantime, thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, comments, put them in the question -y, commenty bit that YouTube so, so thoughtfully provides, and I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, thank you to my Patreon supporters. I appreciate your ongoing support. Bye for now.